G'day everyone, welcome back to Controlled Recoil. So I'm out on the hill at the moment, I'm actually uh, looking for a stag, a late stag. But uh, a quick tip for you guys, um, it's something that's often overlooked and I thought I'd just mention it because I've started to see a few people that have had troubles with it um, later on down the track. And we're talking about how you mount your scope and a couple of things that are often missed and certainly not talked about nearly enough. Um, so. Um, there's obviously a lot to mounting a scope. There's, um, you know, height of scope, you know, is it going to clear all the systems that you need? Are you mounting something like this behind it? You know, attachments, stuff like this. So there's a lot to consider. The main thing we want to get right is the length of pull, um, having that real nice cheek position, whether you need a cheek weld like this to just lift it up a bit if you've got a high mounted scope and maybe you're using a rail or something like that. Do you need a rail for how much elevation you're going to need for your task? Um, there's a lot of things to consider and it's it's worth thinking about the big picture too before you start spending money because it gets expensive when you're changing it around. But the two things that aren't talked about much that I want to discuss at the moment is firstly having your scope on the highest magnification when you mount it. Okay, When you're finding that perfect head position and you're mounting your scope in the correct position for your eye relief, this is when you need to have this on the highest magnification. The reason for that is when you have it on the highest magnification, this is when the eye box in the scope is most sensitive, okay, and it's um, the most difficult to get that nice edge-to-edge -edge clarity and that perfect sight picture, okay. Now, as you wind back in magnification, it only gets easier and more forgiving, okay. So that's where if you set it up for those most critical shots um, and you set the, your head position up for when it's on the highest magnification, there's only a slight bit of difference, but it does make a difference, especially the larger magnification you go. Um, it'll have more effect. So just remember, highest magnification, this is where you're going to need the most precision and it to be the most natural to get that head position um, for that sight picture, okay? If it's easy to get that sight picture on highest magnification, as you wind back, it only gets easier, okay? So it gets more forgiving um, and that, that sort of makes sense with um, your fast shots up close. You know, everything's closer range, usually on the lower magnification. So um, you have more room for error, so to speak. Um, and obviously those precise shots further away, um, it's set up nicely for that. So it's subtle things, but it does help. The next thing is um, getting into the position that you're actually going to be taking those critical shots in. So if 90% or whatever, most of your critical shots are going to be taken prone, um, get into the prone position when you're setting that scope up and have it on the highest magnification. This is often missed, you know, maybe you're inside a store, you know, you're close ranges, maybe 15 yards, so everyone asks you how it looks and you're looking at the tag on the hat stand at 15 yards and it looks great because it's down on the lowest magnification and it always will look good. You need to have it up on that highest magnification and you need to get into the position that you're taking those critical shots and it'll just make your gear feel, it'll be a lot easier to get in position. You won't find yourself sort of searching for that nice sight picture and uh, it'll just make everything flow a lot easier and you won't have to start changing things later as well. So lots of things um, going on when you're mounting a scope. I can go into a more detailed video if you guys like um, with all the different things, um, cant and all that stuff, etc. But um, those are the two things that just often don't happen. And um, it's only small things, but everything counts and uh, it just makes it a lot easier to use your equipment, grow into your equipment and uh, just basically keep improving without um, little things niggling away there and um, yeah, upsetting the flow when you're improving. And uh, yeah, hopefully this helps. Um, in a good setting at the moment, so I'm going to carry on hunting. But yeah, just those two things to remember when you're setting up your rifle system. Any questions, drop them down below. Thanks for watching. Cheers.